I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. I don't want to say it's terrible. We're all having to make sacrifices to try to live a happy life together. Clerk of Court Tom Bexley says his staff is coexisting in the courthouse where he's had to make room for displaced sheriff's office employees. The Flagler County Commission voted Monday to order its administrator Jerry Cameron to reallocate space at the courthouse and accommodate additional needs. After taking a firm stance on the issue, Bexley says the situation, while not desirable, shows both sides making the best of a bad situation and being accommodating towards one another. Having his operation in with ours and ours in with his inherently builds a little discomfort. But we're getting the job done. If, when, I, when I talk to some of his folks one-on-one, they seem to be content with where they are, and, and we're very content with what they're doing right now. I am more than happy to continue the current situation that they have right now until their permanent digs are, are taken care of, and we're, we're talking the next 24, 36 months. A new $15 million Sheriff's Office Operations Center is being constructed near the Palm Coast Library. Hear the full interview with Bexley in the Free for All Friday podcast at WNZF.com. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Sunwing Airlines, nonstop to Toronto, and now nonstop service to New York City via American Airlines. A man is found guilty of assisted suicide in the death of a Palm Coast woman. It took the jury just two hours to return the verdict against 54-year-old Bruce Houghton. Houghton and 52-year-old Catherine Goddard were found in a running car in a sealed garage in June of 2017. Goddard died, but Houghton lived and was hospitalized after Goddard's daughter found them. He had claimed it was a suicide pact. Goddard suffered from severe pain stemming from a 2007 car wreck. Houghton now faces up to 15 years in prison at sentencing next month. He turned down a plea deal wherein he would have served just one additional year. On top of the two years, he's already been behind bars. Suicide prevention is a conversation that will happen in Flagler County tonight. Gretchen Smith is with the Flagler County Health Department. She said that the town hall is a chance to talk about how to prevent suicides in the county. We want to make sure that we're talking about this as a community. Smith said that the reason for the town hall is to get rid of the stigma associated with mental health and asking for help. If you go to the doctor to get a checkup because you think something's up or you know you want to stay healthy, well mental health is part of that too and it shouldn't be a stigma that if you have, you know, this chemical imbalance, you should be able to get treatment for it and it's okay. She said everybody needs to talk to somebody at some time. Smith said at tonight's event, Mayor Melissa Holland would share her personal story. There will also be school board members and specialists on suicide prevention at the event tonight. The town hall is from 6 to 8 at the Flagler County Association of Realtors building. That's at 4101 East Moody Boulevard in Bunnell. If you cannot be at the meeting, WNZF will carry the town hall live. Again, it's from 6 to 8 tonight. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. The Flagler Auditorium Performing Arts Center has a new leader. Tony Magoo has the details. Amelia Fulmer has been chosen by the Flagler Schools and the governing board of Flagler Auditorium as the new director of the Flagler Auditorium. She has a 30-year teaching background in the Flagler School System and has been the director of choral activities, international baccalaureate music instructor, the arts outreach coordinator for Flagler Schools for the past two years, and she's no stranger to the facility. I was one of the first plays in 1991 to present in the Flagler Auditorium. I had two 150 kids in the musical. Fuller has also had what you might call some pro-am events there. We actually sang with the Navy Sea Chanters. We've had many, many opportunities for students to meet actual working professionals. Of the new position, Fulmer said that she anticipates the new challenge, quoting, I look forward to working closely with the staff and the governing board of the Flagler Auditorium Performing Arts Center. However, one thing won't change. We're an investment in the community, and that's always been the mission, and that will never change at Flagler Auditorium. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. It's a working summer for five interns getting a feel for what life behind the badge is all about. Peter Kaleen has the story. The five are taking part in the Flagler County Sheriff's Office internship program, says Sheriff Rick Staley. To help them with their career, and who knows, we might even hire some of these when they graduate. So it's a great way for 
students to obtain credit to learn about law enforcement and um, and maybe even some future new employees. It's an opportunity, says Staley, for college students to gain hands-on experience in various aspects of law enforcement work. Plus, hours are flexible to help the interns accommodate a work or school schedule. They'll be shadowing officers in various sections of the agency, including the Youth Services Section, Police Athletic League, Public Affairs, Court and Detention Services, Community Policing, and Homeland Security. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Peter Colleen. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.